Stress is part of our daily life and crucial to dealing with difficult situations. But it is also one of the main factors contributing to mental disorders. In this video, I will explain the influence of stress on the reward system in the brain and what impact that can have on motivation. If you've seen my previous videos about the reward system, you already understand most of what is going to be relevant here. For the others, here's a short summary. An important pathway in the brain leads from the VTA to the nucleus accumbens and uses the neurotransmitter dopamine. In this pathway, some neurons, I'll call them the effect-related part, activate with reward prediction or unexpected reward. They make sure that we get the motivation to do those things that we believe will be rewarding for us. Other neurons, I'll call them the salience-related part, activate as a reaction to new stimuli that might be important and thus leading our attention to that stimulus. How active those parts of the pathway are is regulated by the ventral pallidum that always inactivates some of the neurons. The percentage of neurons that are still active is called the population activity and the regulation of the population activity by the ventral pallidum is a core feature of stress responses of the reward system. In a stressful situation, it is important for us to pay attention to different stimuli, for example, to discover signs of danger and to be motivated to act and be productive so that we can manage the situation appropriately. This is why it sounds helpful if the reward pathway is more active when we are stressed. And indeed, experiments with rats have shown that the population activity of the neurons from the VTA is higher, which results in a more active reward pathway when they experience intense stress as well as a few hours after. To model a stressful situation, rats are either given food trucks or hauled in a narrow plexiglass for some time so that they cannot move. Interestingly, rats that were under anesthesia while getting the food trucks had the same response which means that the stress does not necessarily has to be conscious. The mechanism through which the population activity was increased has to do with another brain region, the ventral hippocampus. The ventral hippocampus interprets, together with other brain regions, how stressful our situation is. It has a pathway that ultimately, after passing the nucleus accumbens, ends in the ventral pallidum and inhibits it. An inhibited ventral pallidum cannot inactivate that many neurons in the VTA so that we have a higher population activity. In a different experiment, the population activity was examined 24 hours after rats had been restrained in the plexiglass. It showed that their population activity was reduced compared to how it normally is. So that means that they have a less responsive reward pathway after a period of time following a very stressful situation. This reduction of the population activity seems to be connected to an activation of the ventral pallidum by parts of the amygdala. So when experiencing stress, we have a more responsive reward system during the stressful situation and shortly after, which means we are more attentious and motivated during it and shortly after, but this is followed by a period of time with a reduced responsiveness of the reward pathway. We are unmotivated, without energy and have problems getting excited for things. If you have ever wondered why you feel that way after a stressful week at work, even though you were just fine during the week, this is why. A possible explanation to this kind of compensatory mechanism could be that the brain tries to prevent us from getting into the same stressful situation again by taking away our ability to get too motivated for things. Because after all, it is unhealthy to have a lot of stress for a long time. But what happens if the stress continues for a longer period of time? To find out, watch my next video about depression and the reward system.